Number one, use the distributive property to write negative 4 times 7 minus 1 as an equivalent expression. What is the value of the expression? Okay. So to distribute this, we'll take negative 4 times 7 and negative 4 times 1. So that would be negative 4 times a 7 minus negative 4 times a 1. And that gives us negative 28 minus, that would be a negative 4. So something like this, really, if we simplified that, should be negative 28 plus 4. That would be an equivalent expression. But then we also needed to solve that. Negative 28 plus 4 is negative 24. All right, number 2. There are 1s in front of these. They're just phantom 1s. Uh, this may help us to see what we need to distribute into the parentheses, like these. Of course, that's the identity property, so we'll get the same thing back, right? Negative 20, I'm sorry, negative 2x plus 4 plus 4x plus 6, like these. Well, if you ate two turtles and you have four turtles, how many turtles do you have? You have two leftover turtles. And if you had four fish and then you found another six fish, you'd have ten fish. Subtract. Well, once again, we got a one right here. That's a negative one that we're distributing into this second set of parentheses. So this gives us negative x minus 3. But then when I distribute a negative one into this set of parentheses, negative 1 times 5x is a negative 5x. Negative 1 times 2 is negative 2. Well, once again, we can put a phantom one in front of that x right here. Now I ate one turtle, then I ate five more turtles, so I'm eating some turtles. How many? Six. I ate six turtles. On the other hand, I ate three fish, and then I ate two more fish, so I ate how many fish? Five. Five of them, bam. It's B. It's B. Uh, sure, I don't... All right. On this one, we're going to simplify these. All, we're, all it's really telling us to do is to distribute. So this is negative two times an x. And then we got the plus right account. And then it's negative 2 times a fiber. Well, simplify these. Negative 2 times x is a negative 2x. And of course, we got this plus. Negative 2 times a good old 5 would be negative 10. To fully simplify this, we should write this as a negative 2x minus 10, right? Because uh, the opposite of plus is minus right account. All right, simplify 11 plus 3 times 9 minus 6 minus 4. This one looks more like an order of operations problem. So 9 minus 6, that's a 3 right here. And now we will do 3 times 3 by the order of operations. That's a good old 9 So we got 11 plus 9 minus 4. Now we'll do 11 plus 9 which is 20. 20 minus 4, 16. So B. Now you guys have to be careful because sometimes what happens on a these is that uh, you'll do 11 plus 3 first, you get 14, then you'll do the parentheses. That's bad. That's not the order of operations because um, you got to do the multiplication there first between the 3 and the parentheses. So just keep, keep that in mind. We don't want you to make that mistake, which is extremely common. All right. This one has a coefficient of x right account that is 1. It's a phantom 1, phantom negative 1 even. So, yeah, let's say that you had two turtles, but then you ate one. How do you eat pets? It's not, no, they're not, you're not growing them as pets. They're like uh, agricultural animals, right? You take off the shell. You keep them out in the field, and then they grow, and they have babies, and then you eat the parents. And let the babies grow up, you know what I'm saying? And then you eat yeah. the babies until they have more. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, you know how, yeah, it's a cycle. Mm -hmm, cycle. Yeah. Well, how many turtles would you have left? One. You'd have one turtle left. Well, if you had a fish and then you found two more fish, how many fish would you have? Three. three. That'd be three that you have, so it's positive. You could have written this as x plus three as well. You could have written it as three plus x or three plus one x. Any one of these four work. What is the value of 6a plus 2b if a is 1 and b is 2? Well, I like to color code these, right? So we got 6 plus a 2a, a 2b rather. I'm going to make the a red and the b purple. 
so that when we replace them, we know what we're replacing them with. So the A, for example, is right here. That's a 1. So I'm replacing it with 1. I got 6 times 1 right here. And then the B value, we can see up here in the top right, is a 2. So I got 2 times 2 right here. So by the order of operations, we're going to have to multiply the 6 and 1. That's a 6. 2 times 2 is fewer. This is addition. And then finally, 6 plus 4 is 10. Here we go. This is another one of those types of problems. Uh, we have a D value here on the bottom. D is 2. So I'm going to replace the D with 2. And then I got a C value down here, which is 3. So I'm going to replace the C with 3. That may come as a surprise to some of you, and that's okay. So 12 times 2 is 20 fewer. 7 times 3 is 21. And this is subtraction. So 24 minus 21, I get 3. So uh, on a these, I got 4 times the R, and R we can see right here. Is a gold niner. And the S is a 2. So I'm going to do the multiplication of the numerator right here. 4 times niner, 36. And then this is all divided by 2. If you wanted to, you could use long division. 36 divided by 2. 2 goes into 3 once. Subtract 2. Then I'm looking at 16. It goes into that 8. So the answer is 8. Um, well, 18 is right. So, yeah. Name the multiplication property shown in this equation. 12 times m equals m times 12. Well, as we can see, the order has changed. So it is, and there's no parentheses, so it could not possibly be associative. It's not multiplying by one, so it's not the identity property. This one. Yeah, very good. It's the communist property. Commutative. Commutative property of mult. All right. The area of a gymnasium is 27x plus 18 square units. Factor that to find possible dimensions of the gymnasium. So we're just going to factor this using the greatest common factor, even though there are others for it. But uh, we don't want all of them, even though it kind of did ask for possible dimensions. No, we want to use the greatest common factor for these. So, for example, 27x. Uh, the 27 we can split up into 3 and 9. -er. The 3 is prime. Well, 9 splits up into 3 and 3, like these. So, those are all primes. So, now we just see that 27 is 3 times 3 times 3 times x. Well, then we got the 18 up in here. And 18 splits up into 3 and 6. Or 2 and 9 if you want. And then this is a 2 and a 3. So 18 is just 3 times 3 times 2. So when we want to find our greatest common factor, we just want factors that are common between these two. I got a 3 right account and a 3 right account. So this is 3 times 3, which is 9. So from that expression, I've got 9 on the outside of the parentheses and addition in the middle. So uh, from the 27x, we can see that there was a 3x remaining. So that is in place of where the 27x were. And the 18 has a 2 that remains. So that goes in place of where the 18 were. Bam, got my answer. Number 14. Milani spent four hours babysitting. She charges 16 bucks up front and then an additional charge per hour. The total amount she charged, uh, earned, rather, can be represented by this expression. 4x plus 16, factor the expression. Okay. Well, we got a 4x, and 4 splits up into 2 and 2. So 4x just becomes 2 times a 2 times an x. And then we got 16 up in here, which splits up into 4 and 4, which splits up into 2 and 2 each. 
And so 16 ends up becoming 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Now we want our greatest common factor, which I have a pair of 2s and these 2s in common as well. So 2 times 2 is 4. So from the expression, we got a 4, and it was an addition between. And what's, what's left over from the 4x? Well, I've got this x right account. And what's left over from the 16? 2 times 2, which is 4. Now, if you make that a 1x, that's okay. But uh, this should be the factored form of that expression. What is the value of the expression f squared plus 5 if f is 3? Well, we know that f squared means that it's f times f. And f is 3, so really, when we see this 3 squared plus 5, this is really just going to come out to 3 times 3 plus 5. And we can evaluate this. 3 times 3 is 9 or so we got 9 plus 5, which is, as it turns out, 14. All right, we've seen some like this one as well, number 2. And I've got 9x, but x is 3, minus 4y, and y is 2. So 9 times 3, bam, 27. 4 times 2 is 8. So 27 minus 8. Bam, 19. So which property of multiplication is shown by this equation? 4 times hua times a 1 equals 14 hua. Well, once again, there are no parentheses, so we know it's not associative. Uh, nothing really moved around, so it's not commutative. Commutative. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Well, uh, so what is this one then? Identity. Well, yeah, it's being multiplied by 1, so this is the identity property of multiplication. Identity prop uh -oh. property of mold. What is the value of this expression? Uh, in one of the classes I used... Uh, order of operations. So I'm going to use distribution on this one. 3 times 2 minus a 3 times a 7. So that gives me 6 minus a 20 Juan, which I find to be negative 15. Thank you, and good luck. Okay, um, which expression is equivalent? Okay. So what you're supposed to do, is, since it's a negative, you're supposed to distribute it. That's how I did it. So it's negative 3 times x, which is negative 3x. And it is negative 3 times 10, which is negative 30. So it is negative 3x minus 30, and I think that's the final answer. Correct. H. That is correct. H. Good luck. Okay. So, um, let's see. This is a term. This is a term. This is a term. And this is a term. And you have to combine like terms. So 7y and negative 7y. Then positive 15 and negative 8. And 7y minus 7y would equal 0. And... 15 minus 8 would equal seven. 0 plus 7, which is 7. Correct. Excellent, Bert. All right, good luck. Okay. Oh, shoot. Okay. So, you take x minus 3x, which is negative 2x, and then 6 minus 8 is negative 2. So that's how you get that answer. Yeah.
All right, excellent work. Yes. All right, good luck. Okay, so 25x breaks down to 5 and 5. So, and then 45 breaks down to um, 5 times 9. Okay, and then nine that breaks down to three, three. So five prime. Um, okay, so five. Yeah, five for the bot for the forty-five, and then it's three and three. So. You only have one pair that matches up, so that'd be 25. So 25 is on your outside. And then it'd be... Eight. You have 5x left. And add 3. Add 3. All right, thank you. Okay. Now, let's address this, right? Well, the fives are in common, right? So technically, it's not that we're multiplying. I'm talking about these fives right here, right? These are the common fives, which means that we're just pulling out of the parentheses A5, because it's common, right? Now we got the 5x because it was actually 25x, very good. Uh, over here though, we got 3, is that 3 plus 3? Yeah. So over here though, it shows us 3 times 3, right? Oh, yeah. So we would just multiply those, which would give us a 9 right there. So this is 5 times the quantity 5x plus the old 9 -er, and that is it. Wait, so it's it's this one? Good luck. Thank you. Okay. Wait, can you use a phantom one? Sure. Okay. So I put a phantom on here, and then I got, I just went like that, and I got those right here. And then I, so. I added these two, wait, subtract them. subtracted these two, which was, did I get the question wrong? I'll help you. Okay, no. Wait, do you subtract those? 12 minus 7 is 4. four. Oh. And then... You add these two. No. No. And then you add these two. It's actually 12x plus 3x. Oh, which equals 15. I don't know. I can't see that. Oh, yeah. I had this right, Christian. Okay, so you add these two. These two. Where's the eraser? You add these two, which equals 15x, and then you subtract these two, which equals 2, which equals it 15x minus 2. Bam. Next one works. Nice. Yeah, I had it right. So good. Uh, way to fix that. I was looking upside down. 15x minus 2. So in the beginning right here, why can't we take 12x and subtract 7? Because they're, they're yeah, because it's like combining turtles and fish, whether you're eating or getting them, doesn't matter. So, yeah. Combine the fishes and the turtles separately. All right, good luck. Okay. So, 3x minus x equals 2x, and then 5 plus 2 equals 7, so it's 2x. 
2x plus 7. Positive 7. Bam. Nice. Now, again, this is a good example because it should help us to see some things that we need to fix. Okay? That's all right. So it's a good example. Remember, this is a negative 1 right here, right? So when we distribute that, that makes that a negative x and then minus 2 right here. So in actuality, that would be 5 minus a 2, changing that 7 into a 3. All right, this one we have to be extremely careful with because it's just vocabulary, which makes it extremely difficult. So the coefficient, can someone describe what a coefficient is? Camry, use your hand up. Um, isn't it like the other behind the number? Kind of. Can we add to that? Kennedy? Uh, it's the number with the letter. Yeah, it's the number with the letter. Or, in other words, what operation are we using? Millie? Um, oh, multiplication. multiplication. So we're not really so worried about the plus 4 right account. That's not going to help us with what the coefficient is. It is a term, though. So the coefficient on this one, 10. Now, here's the problem, though. Some of you guys want to write 10a. That's bad. a is the variable or unknown. It is not the actual coefficient. So when it asks for the coefficient, that is just 10. Number one, use the distributive property to write negative 4 times 7 minus 1 as an equivalent expression. Okay, well, if I distribute this negative 4, because that's what it said to do, then I would get negative 4 times a 7 minus, well, negative 4 times a 1, which when I multiply these, I get negative 28 minus negative 4. But we're just going to simplify that and make that a plus, and this would be the expression and then it wants us to find the value of the expression, negative 28 plus 4 is negative 24. Up and down. Wants us to add these two. So that's a parenthesis. And to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be distributing 1's into both of these. So 1 times negative 2x is a negative 2x. Plus 1 times 4 is 4. Plus 1 times 4x is 4x. Plus 1 times 6 is 6. So... As we can see from right here, uh, since we're multiplying by 1 the whole time, it's just the identity property. All that changed was that we got rid of the parentheses, <clears throat> which may be extremely convenient for some of you. Others, maybe not. In any case, <clears throat> now I just need to combine like terms. Right here, I've got uh, that I've eaten two turtles, right? But then I have four turtles over here. So when I combine them, I find that I would have two turtles remaining. All right, and then uh, if we compare the numbers to fish, then I've got four fish, and then I've got six fish over here. So when I combine them, I have ten total fish. I have ten fish, so it's positive. Bam, there's our expression. Number three, again, I've got a one to distribute right here. And over here, this is going to be a negative one. So a common mistake on number three, something that we see often, is that we simplify these to be negative x minus a 3 minus a 5x plus a 2. No, this is wrong because, once again, we're distributing this as a negative 1. Negative 1 times 5x is that negative 5x, but negative 1 times that 2 will make that a minus 2 right account. So we have to be extremely careful when distributing a negative. Uh, in the lesson that we did last time, we just said that that's an opposite. So the opposite of 5x is negative 5x, and the opposite of plus 2 is minus 2. Well, now we can combine like terms, and right here, I've got uh, negative 1x. So if I eat a turtle, then I eat 5 turtles. Then uh, how many turtles have I eaten? 6. So that would be negative 6 because I only ate them. On the other hand, if I ate 3 fish, and then over here I ate 2 fish, bam, I would have eaten 5 fish. Simplify these, what it's really asking us to do is to distribute. So right here, I've got negative 2x, uh, negative 2 times x, which is negative 2x. 
And negative 2 times 5 is negative 10. And that is it. All right, number five uh, just says to simplify, which really means that in this case we're going to evaluate because there are no variables. So we can use order of operations if we choose, which is actually what I'm going to do. So just be careful. Some people do 11 plus 3 first right here. No, that's very bad. We don't want you to do that because that's out of order. Okay. So what we're going to do is distribute the 3 because that's multiplication. I'm sorry, we're not going to distribute the 3. I'm going to do parentheses first, actually. So 9 minus 6, bam, that's 3. You could distribute, by the way. I'm just not going to because this, to me, is a little bit easier. So <clears throat> then I've got uh, 3 times 3, which is a good old 9-er. And I've got 11 plus old 9-er minus fewer. And 11 plus old 9-er, bam, 20. So 20 minus fewer, and I get 16. Let's simplify ADs, and to do that, I'm going to give that x, a negative x, a phantom negative 1, right count. And when I combine these, so I have two turtles, but I eat one of them, bam. How many turtles does I have? One. I've got one left over. And then over here, I've got one fish, then I find I have two other fish. Behold, I've got three fish. There we go. Of course, if you guys want to write this as x plus 3, that's fine. Uh, if you want to write it as 3 plus x, that's also okay. Or 3 plus 1x. Any one of these will work. All right, what is the value of 6a plus 2b if a is 1 and b is 2? Well, we got 6a plus a 2b. And all we're going to do is replace these with the values. These two letters with the values that they give us. So a is a Juan, so I'm just going to replace a with a Juan. And I'm going to replace b with the b value they gave us, which was 2. Now, using the word of operations, 6 times 1 is 6. 2 times 2 is fewer. So I got 6 plus 4, which is 14. 10. It's 10. So on this one, 12d minus 7c. And at the bottom again, they gave us a value of d right here. So I'm going to replace the d with its value, which is a 2. And then the C value down here is a 3. So I'm going to replace a C with 3. Now again, we'll evaluate these. So 12 times 2 is 24. Minus 7 times 3, bam, I get 21. 24 minus 21, uh, 3. That's better. All right, on this one, we got 4R times S. R, right here, is 9 -er. And then the S value is 2. So 4 times 9 divided by 2. <clears throat> and uh, we'll just, by the word of operations, we've got to do the numerator first. So 4 times old 9 -er, 36, divided by the 2. If you don't have a calculator, you may have to use this long division on this one. So 36. Divided by 2 goes into 3 once. Subtract and I get 16. 2 goes into 16 exactly 8 times. Bam. The answer to this one is 18. Number 12, name the multiplication property shown. Well, we can see all the change was the order on this. There are no parentheses, so it's not associative. It's not being multiplied by 1, so it's not uh, the identity property. Therefore, this one must be the communist, commutative, commutative property of multiplication. Uh, it says to find possible dimensions of this thing, but uh, we don't really want all the dimensions, so we're just going to use the greatest common factor to factor this one out. So... We got this 27x first. Let's look at it at these. 27 splits up into 3. All right, continuing. We got this 3. That's prime, 3 and 9. And 9 splits up into 3 and 3. So 27, as it turns out, is just 3 times 3 times 3 times an x. And then 18. 
We will split up into, I don't know, 2 and 9 or could have used 3 and 6. And the 9 again is 3 and 3. So 18 is 2 times 3 times 3. But what we want out of this thing is the greatest common factor. So we need to find common factors like 3. And then there's another 3 as well. So 3 times 3, greatest common factor is old 9 -er. So from this expression, we got 9 with a plus in between. And from the 27x, we've got this 3x remaining. So I'm going to replace the 3x where the 27x would be. And then the 18, we had this 2 left over right here. So I replaced that where the 18 was. Bam. Factored it. Now just keep in mind in future problems that are word problems, you'd have to label this. But right now we're not so concerned with that. Melanie spent four hours babysitting. She charges $16 up front and then an additional charge per hour. Total amount she earned can be represented by the expression 4x plus 16. Okay, well, hmm. Uh, factor the expression on this one. So let's take a gander at it, these. <clears throat> we got a 4x plus 16. Well, let's look at 4x first. <clears throat> 4x splits up into 2 and 2, so that's 2 times 2 times an x. And then a 16 splits up into 2 and 8, which splits up into 2 and 4, which splits up into 2 and 2. So we got four twos right here. 16 is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. And our greatest common factor, bam, we got this pair of twos and this pair of twos. So that, was, that would be 2 times 2, which is 4. So this ends up being 4 times some garbage up in here. And what do we have left over from the 4x? Bam, I got an x. What do we have left over from the 16? 2 times 2, which is 4. Bam. Nailed it. 4 times the parentheses x plus 4. What is the value of the expression f squared plus 5 if f is 3? Well, f squared is just f times f, so... Really, we can make this a 3 squared plus 5, which, again, really is just 3 times 3 plus 5. So by the order of operations, we'd do 3 times 3, which is old 9 plus 5, which should come out to 14. Hey. All right, we've seen problems like number 2. This one, again, we're just going to replace the x, in this case, with 3, so 9 times 3 minus 4 times the y value, which in this case is 2. And 9 times 3 is 27. And 4 times 2 is 8. Subtraction, you know. 27 minus 8, 19. All right, number 3, which property of multiplication is shown by the equation 4 times y times 1 equals 14 y? Well, this one... Since it is multiplying by 1, the order hasn't changed, but there's no parentheses, so it's not associative. None of the order has changed between the numbers and letters, so this one must be the identity property of multiplication. Number 7, what is the value of this expression? You could distribute the 3, but again, you could do the order of operations. It really doesn't matter. You should get the same answer either way. 2 minus 7 is a good old negative 5. So I got 3 times negative 5, which comes out to be negative 15. Three groups of negative 5. Got it. All right, good luck. Okay. So, <clears throat> so first what you do is you kind of like have to do the distributive pro property. Or what I did is because x is 1, I just did that. Um... So then you do negative 3 times 1, and then negative 3 times 10. But first, if you do this, negative 3 times 1 is negative 3, and, or at negative 3x, and then plus, wait, yeah, and then times negative 3, or negative 3 times 10 is negative 30. Can you just do minus instead of plus? Oh, yeah. Yeah.
Oh, I didn't have to do that. I did. What the? All right, that works. It's a weird shade. Like, can you got? It's drawing on my screen, but it's not. Oh yeah, sorry. We'll just get rid of that garbage. All right, so negative three x minus thirty. We'll just write that below down the count. Negative three x minus thirty. That's good. So it's h. Yep. But I did get it right on my page. Number nine, or good luck. So first thing you want to do is you want to make sure you know what your values are. So I like to split it up like this. And so we're going to take this seven y. And we're going to subtract it by this 7y, which is 0. And then, so you don't have to worry about that. And then you're going to do fi uh, positive 15 minus 8, because that's just a minus. Because negative and minus are basically the same. And so you're going to do <coughs> positive 15 minus 8, which equals 7. Bam. That's it. 7 is correct. Right here. Okay. So basically, I'll just go like just separate them so I would know oh, what uh, if it's positive or negative, and so I know that these are common, uh, and that would be negative three x, and then like a triangle, and that's <coughs> two. Nice. Excellent work. All right, so this is a good example for us to see, you know, like this is something that happens commonly, right? What's the coefficient of this x? Phantom 1. So it's really 1 minus 3x, right? So uh, this one, instead of it being a negative 3x, should be a negative 2x. Right? Good luck. Okay. So we're going to want to find the greatest common fact, well, the factors of 25, which are 1, 5, 5, and 25. And then you'll want to find the factors of 45, which are 1, 3, 5, 9, 15, and 45, then you'll find the greatest common factor, which is 5. <laughs> Okay, so first um, we're going to do it, so we're going to do, we're going to add this, what, um, yeah, so what I did is I did, um, so I had 12x, so 12, and then, and then I have plus, yeah, so I had this, and then I had 3x, but like what I, but what I did, I don't like this, and then kind of like cross it out as I went. Um, so you have to do, so you have to add these, so in the right here, and you go 3x, and you kind of go to the next symbol, so which would be plus, so then you go plus, and I'm doing this so long. Okay, we're starting this. I just realized everything. None of this is here. Ooh. Okay. I'm smart. Remember that. Okay, so we're going to add this. We're going to do this. We're going to do 12. What the heck? Uh, Mr. Cell, it's not writing again. It's showing clear. Okay. So you got 12. So you got 12x. And you're going to 
add plus three, so we're gonna cross this out. Um, cross this out. And then you, um, yeah, you know, yeah, okay. Oh, let me see, I forgot this. Okay. Got this, got this. Okay. So, now you're going to subtract out this, because you already used it. And then plus 3x. If you add that, that is 15x. Um, and, so you're going to cross this out. And you have plus... 5, so you're going to just go like that, 5 minus 7, you're going to get negative 2, so you actually get 15, um, you get 15, what's it called, 15, or 15x minus 2, or negative 2. It's kind of messy. Dang it. Um, All right, 15x minus 2 is correct. Very nice. Good luck. Do I have to explain it? Mm -hmm. Well, so I do 3x plus 5 minus x plus 2. So I split mine up. And then I combined like terms, and this is 7, and this is 2x, and this is a positive 7, so it's 2x plus 7. Bam. Is that right? Uh, we'll see. Okay. Well, uh, so we did talk a little bit about this earlier, right? So, uh, this is something that happens often on the test. Now, we want you guys to not do this. Uh, uh, what, what do we need to fix on this, though? Oh, you and Juliet? Well, the negative sign in front of x plus 2 means all of the uh, Numbers inside of the parentheses are the opposite of what they are. Very good. So instead of that being a plus 2 right there, we would have to change that to a minus 2. So the 2x is good, but uh, instead of that being 7, what, what does it need to be? A 3. It is positive 3, so that's good. And this expression, 10a plus 4... Identify the coefficient. <clears throat> so who can tell us what a coefficient is? Well, it's like a number with a, with a letter. What do you mean, like a number that's with a letter with subtraction? Or what, what does that mean? Okay, so like four is next to a letter. Right? Lacey, what do you think? Yeah, very good. We need it to be multiplied, because, I mean, some people would say that the 4 is with the A right there, even though it's not, okay? So in the term, it's the number being multiplied by the letter. In this case, that is 10. Now, be careful, because on the test, you'll get, you're going to want to write 10A, but you'll only write that if you want to lose points. The answer, the coefficient is just the number that is being multiplied by the letter, which is a variable or unknown, so it's just uh, 10 on this. All right, so we're just going to be reviewing the practice test, right account, and we'll go over all four pages, and then you guys can study. So number one, use the distributive property to write negative 4 times 7 minus 1 as an equivalent expression, and then what is the value of the expression? So we need two things. We need to distribute the negative 4 into the parentheses. So that gives us a negative 4 times a 7 minus a negative 4 times a 1. Which, if we were to evaluate those, negative 4 times 7 is negative 28. And then we got minus a negative. So we're going to make that a plus 4 times 1 is 4. This would be one of the answers that they wanted right account. But then they wanted us to actually evaluate this thing. So negative 28 plus 4, bam, negative 28.
24. So let's add these. And when we do add these, as it turns out, it's kind of like we're distributing a 1 into both these set of parentheses. And if I take 1 and multiply it by anything, as you should know, it gives us the same thing back. Does anyone remember what property that is? That's the identity property of addition specifically. I'm sorry, multiplication in this case. So, uh, this is what we have now, which will allow us to combine like terms. Here I've got a negative 2x and then a plus 4x. When I combine these, how many x's do I have? Two of them. And then if I look at these four and combine them with these six, four plus six, bam, that gives me a positive 10. There it is. All right, so right here, we need to subtract these. Uh, but what this really is, is we're going to be distributing ones here. In this case, we're going to be distributing a negative one. So that becomes a negative 5x, right account, and then minus 2. And then when we distribute that 1 into this set of parentheses, we get negative x minus 3. Again, the identity property of multiplication. So, nothing changed on that first set of parentheses, but now I can combine like terms. Uh, if I eat one turtle and then I eat another 5 turtles, how many did I eat? 6. Yeah, so it's a negative 6x, right? And then if I have these negative 3's and then these negative 2's, I should have a negative 5. Simplify these. All it wants us to do is to distribute. So negative 2 times x. And then we got negative 2 times 5. Of course that's plus between up in here. And negative 2 times x is just negative 2x. And negative 2 times 5 is negative 10. So we did replace that plus with a minus because that became a negative 10. Bam. All right, let's simplify these. So we've got this 3 times the 9 minus 6. And technically, it doesn't matter how you do this one. If you wanted to do the order of operations first, you could. So 9 minus 6, that's what I'm going to do. That's a 3. I got 11 plus 3 times that 3 minus a four. By the order of operations, now I would do multiplication right account. 3 times 3 is a good old 9 -er. So we got 11 plus 9 -er minus 4. And then 11 plus 9 -er, well, that gives me 20 minus this 4. 20 minus 4, bam, 16. So, by the order of operations, there's no distribution needed, because um, there's no parentheses. And there's no exponents, so that's good. Multiplication and division from left to right, none. All we got to do is combine like terms on it, these. So, it may be helpful to see the phantom one right account. And if I take these two x's, and then I eat one of the x's, then how many x's do I have? One. Because I had two, then I ate one. Bam. Well, what about these? Let's say I had one fish right here, and then two fish right here. Well, how many fishes do I have now? Three. Three fishes. Of course, if you want to just write this as x plus three, that's fine. Some of you also prefer to write this as three plus x, or three plus one x. That's okay. What is the value of 6a plus 2b if a is one and b is two? So, I got this set up. Now all I need to do is replace the A value with the A value they gave us. And that is right account. A is 1. So I'm replacing A with 1. Additionally, it tell, told us the value of B, which is 2, right account. So where the B value was, I will replace with a 2. Now I will solve. 6 times a Juan is a 6. 2 times a 2 is fewer. So 6 plus 4, bam, 10. What is the value of 12d minus 7c if d is 2 and c is 3? Very much similar to the last one we just did. 
And once again, all I'm doing is replacing the D value with the D value they gave us, which was 2. And then the C value as well. I will replace with the 3, because they told us C is 3. Now when I evaluate this, 12 times 2, 24, minus 7 times 3 is 21. Well, when I combine these, I get 3. Number 11. So we got 4 times the R over S. And we can see right now that R is 9 -er. So I'm going to replace R with 9 -er. And S I will replace with 2. Up in here. Well, uh, on these types, we need to do numerators and denominators first. So in other words, I need to multiply 4 and 9 first to get 36. And then we'll divide that by 2. And uh, some of you guys may prefer this using long division. Some of you don't, whatever. Uh, 2 goes into 3 once. So 1 times 2 is 2 minus. And 2 goes into 16 8 times. Exactly. So it looks like the answer to this is 18. Of course, you guys can use calculators. So uh, hopefully that wasn't too bad. Number 12, name the multiplication property shown. In this equation, 12 times m equals m times 12. Well, it's not uh, multiplying by 1, so it's not the identity property. And there are no parentheses, so it couldn't be associative, which we, of course, never abbreviate. So this one is the communist. Commutative, sorry. Commutative property. Yeah, sorry, I, I guess the communist, uh, it, uh, the communist property is just, it all belongs to the government, so good job. The area of a gymnasium is 27x plus 18 square units. Factor that. Okay, that sounds great. Well, to do that, so I'm going to write this, I'm going to write this over here, actually. 27x plus 18, then we'll factor over here. But let's look at 27, oh, that's not 27. 27x right here. Well, 27 splits up into, I get 3 and 9. -er. 3 is prime, so I'm going to circle it. 9 is a 3 and a 3. So 27x should split up into 3 times 3 times 3 times an x, right? And then we've also got an 18 up in here which should split up into, uh, well, I got 2 and 9 -er. Some of you guys may have used 3 and 6. doesn't matter. And then 9 splits up into 3 and 3 again. That's very nice. So 18 splits up into 2 times a 3 times a 3. So when I find my greatest common factor, I'm looking at these two, and I just kind of line them up like this because that came from 18. And then I want any common factors to find my greatest common factor. So here's a pair of threes right account. Here's another pair of threes. Since they're factors, I will multiply these. So I've got nine. That's my greatest common factor times this garbage. And what was left over from the 27? Well, I had a three and an x. Bam. So that's left over from the 27x. And then from the 18, what's left over? I got this 2. Bam, there it is. Factored. All right, Milani spent four hours babysitting. She charged $16 up front and then additional charge per hour. Total amount she earned can be represented by these. Let us factor it. Well, let's look at a uh, good old 4x. 4 just splits up into 2 and 2, so 4x splits up into 2 times 2 times x. Okay, so again, we're doing this. Find the greatest common factor, and since this is a review, hopefully you guys knew that already. 16 will split up into 4 and 4. Could have used 2 and 8, whatever. So that gives me 2 and 2, right account. And then this 2 and 2, right account. So this becomes 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Very nice. 
And then to find my greatest common factor, I just find anything that is common between the two. I've got these two twos, my greatest common factor, which multiplies out to be 4. So from the original expression, 4x plus a 16, like these, I factor out a 4, the greatest common factor. And then what was left over? Well, from the 4x, I've got this x right here. And then from the 16, I've got 2 times 2, which is 4. Bam, factored. Number one, what is the value of the expression f squared plus 5 if f is 3? Well, we're just going to replace f with the 3. And then we said we're going to take f and square it, and then y at 5. So 3 squared is really just 3 times 3, so that would be old 9 -er. And then we'll add 5 to these, and 9 plus 5 is uh, 14. What is the value of 9x plus 4 hua if x is 3 and hua is 2? Okay, well, we got 9x minus a 4 hua. And we'll replace x with the x value that it gave us, which was 3. And the y value the same. And the y value they gave us is 2. So 9 times 3, that's going to give us good old 27. And then minus 4 times 2 is 8. Then we got 27 minus 8, bam, 35. No. 19, right? Just be careful on that because it seems like some of you guys still may have the tendency to add at that point. Don't, because it is subtract. Which property of multiplication is shown by this equation? Uh-oh. Well, something happened on at these, right? 14 times hua times a 1 equals 14 hua. Well, did anything uh, commute? No. Did we associate things differently? No. no. Then what the heck is it? Yeah, this one can't be distributive because there's no parentheses. So what is it? That is correct. This one is the identity property. What is the value of the expression? So the nice thing about this, you got two choices. You could use distribution if you wanted to, or you could just use order of operations. So that's what I'm going to do. Order of operations is the better habit to be in. 2 minus 7, bam, 5, right? Wrong, it's negative 5. So I got 3 times negative 5, and if I had 3 groups of negative 5, I would get negative 15. There it is. All right, simplify these. Negative 3 times uh, x plus 10. So you, a couple ways we can look at this. We can be distributing a negative 3, which is what I prefer. Others of you may prefer to see this as the opposite of three groups of x plus 10. Whatever, okay? You get to choose. In any case, let's distribute, because that's what I like to do. Negative 3 times x, and then we got negative 3 times the 10 right here, with the plus sign between. And then negative 3 times x is a negative 3x. And then negative 3 times 10 is a negative 30. Done. All right. So 7 hua. Let's say that I had, um, I don't know, 7 turtles. I like turtles. Turtles are cute. Well, what if I ate those seven turtles? Because I'm subtracting them, right? Well, how many turtles would I have left? I'd have zero turtles. Well, what if I had 15 fish and then I ate eight of them? How many fish would I have? I'd have seven fish left, right? Well, we don't usually put the zero why right there because that's kind of the identity property of multiplication. Not the identity, I'm sorry. The null property. Not that that's important to us right now. 
So the answer is 7. That's it. Well, again, if you have a turtle, then you eat three turtles. Then how many turtles do you have? You've eaten two, too many turtles. And then if I have six fish, but then I ate eight fish, then I owe someone two fish. Bam. That's it. Factor 25x plus 45 using the greatest common factor. Okay. So once again, we'll go back to 25x radical. And let's use the factor tree. 25 splits up into 5 and 5, both of which are prime. So this becomes 5 times 5 times an x. And then I've got 45, which splits up into, I got 9 and 5. And then 9 splits up into 3 and 3. So 45 equals 5 times 3 times 3. And when I want my greatest common factor, I just need any factors that are common, which in this case looks like it's just this 5. So from this expression, I'm going to factor out a 5. And then what's left over from the 25x? You know, 5x right account. And then the 45... 3 times 3, which is 9 -er. There it is. All right, let's add these. Once again, we have a 1 that's being distributed into both of these. So 1 times 12x is 12x. And then 1 times 5 is still positive 5. Then we're going to add this to this other one. 1 times 3x is 3x. And 1 times negative 7 is negative 7. Nothing changed on that. We just got rid of the parentheses, which was so fun. So, I will combine like terms now. If I had 12 turtles, and then I found three other turtles, then in terms of turtles, I would have 15 turtles. Bam. Well, if I had uh, five fish, and then I ate seven fish, then I clearly owe someone two fish. So that would be a negative two. Bam. 15x minus two. All right, on this problem, same idea. We'll distribute a one right account, and then this would be distributing a negative one. So one times three x is three x, and one times five is a plus five. Now again, we're distributing this as a negative one, so negative one times x is a negative x. Negative one times two is a negative two. Now I just need to combine like terms. Three x with that negative one x, Combines to be 2x's. And then 5 minus 2, 3, which is positive. Bam, answer. In the expression, 10a plus fior, identify the coefficient. All right, does anyone remember what the coefficient is? Not, not what, what the answer is to this question, but like what is the description of the coefficient? It's Abby, right? Abby. That is correct. The number being multiplied by the variable, which in this case is 10. Now be careful on the test. Some of you may have a tendency to write 10a. That would make it wrong. It's just the number that's being multiplied by the a does not include the a, which is the variable or unknown. 